Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to welcome our friends from Tolba with Prescott URC as well. Welcome. And afterwards, there'll be tea, coffee, biscuits, whatever, um, down the bottom end over there. <laughs> um, Friday, we're going to try a rummage sale again. It's getting far too cold to go on a Saturday to um, Earlstown car boot sale so we're going to try a rummage sale at 6.30 on Friday, help is needed <coughs> dates for your diary on Wednesday the 6th of December at 7pm Christmas with the choirs it's £3 a ticket and the donations are going to Dementia Group 
Um, Thursday, the 7th of December, um, Paisley Cross have been invited to Ravenhead Foyer um, in Shirdley Road, 1 till 3 p.m. That's their Christmas afternoon for us, for the, the way of saying thanks for all the things that we give to them, the Christmas presents, the food through the year. Um, and you have a little game, a free game of bingo. So that's all free of charge. And they make us cakes and things. Um, 12th of November, don't forget, it's Armistice Service. Just put that in your diary. Um, 10.45 starts so that we can be on time for 11 o'clock. And next week, the morning service will be taken by Mary Foley. Thank you. So a warm welcome to you all here today and a warm welcome to those who are watching this online and to our friends from Tolbar with Prescott URC. It's lovely to have you here, have you join in our worship. We begin our time together today with our call to worship and some words from Ephesians chapter 4. The same one who came down is the one who went back up, that he might fill all things everywhere with himself, from the very lowest to the very highest. Some of us have been given special ability as apostles. To others, he has given the gift of being able to preach well. Some have ability in winning people to Christ, helping, him to, helping them to trust him as their saviour. Still others have a gift for caring for God's people as a shepherd does his sheep leading and teaching them in the ways of God. Why is it that he gives us these special abilities to do certain things best? It is that God's people will be equipped to do better work for him, building up the church, the body of Christ, to a position of strength and maturity, until finally we all believe alike about our salvation and about our saviour, God's son, and all become full grown in the Lord, Yes, to the point of being filled full with Christ. Wow. So we're going to pray now. And I ask you to please respond with the words in bold as they appear on the screen. Come all you saints from west and east and from south and north. We come and worship God. Come all of us sinners with our fumbling attempts at holiness. We come and worship God. Come God's people, saints and sinners, victorious failures, failures and stumbling disciples. We come and worship God. Come and worship. Find here in this place strength for the journey, forgiveness for failure and inspiration from Jesus, our wounded yet triumphant Lord. We come and worship God. And we continue in prayer. God, who offers us rest, refreshment, and time to spend listening and learning from you, we come and offer our praises to you. For you are our redeemer and sustainer, our light and life, and it is a joy to be with you now. We come to meet you in word and song, movement and silence, prayer and praise, knowing you hold us in the warmth of your love. O oh God, who knows us better than we know ourselves, we come to praise your name as committed yet muddled disciples. We recall your saints of all, old Lord Jesus, and admire their tenacity, faith and determination to proclaim you despite the cost. Forgive us when we're distracted disciples, when our faith fails and when our Christianity is compromised, when we prefer to run away or hide rather than proclaim you as Lord. God who forgives that which we might see as unforgivable, give us time to change, time to see the world and those around us as you do, and give us grace to understand that the message we share is a message for all people. Amen. As you know, lots of this is happening in the Middle East, um, and I'd like to read a prayer that has been written by Reverend Neil Thorogood. So let's again pray. 
This land, dear God, this land means so much to so many. We hear your voice in the ears of Moses and it reverberates and ricochets into today. You showed Moses the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jericho Valley, the city of Palms, all the way to Zor. You made your promise. This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to your descendants. Once more this holy land is hurting, once more this land is burning, lives and communities are torn apart, hopes for peace and justice drain into the sand without a trace. Violence and suffering, hated, hatred and brutality spread their poison. War in this land, cherished and dear to Israel as to Palestinian, visits suspicion, abuse and fear upon communities much closer to us. The sides are taken, the blame is delivered, the scapegoats are chosen. What are we to pray this day? This we can pray. That peace will be born where so much is suffered by so many. That care and compassion will embrace all who suffer and all who mourn. That hearts attuned to war might hear a gentler song. That those with power and influence might be blessed with wisdom that aid and relief might reach the broken hearts and homes, that your land of so much suffering might become a place of possibility for all who call it home. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God of Moses, God revealed in Jesus of Nazareth, holy God of grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Let's sing our first hymn, shall we? For all the saints.
wonder just how many people you have known over the years. People you went to school with, people you went to church with, people from where you live, where you used to work. Do you keep in touch or have you moved on, moved away? Are you close? Are you meeting up regularly or are you just a card at Christmas sort of relationship? Do you like them all? Do you like them all all the time? What might, you, might make you like some and dislike others or get on better with some and not others? We might think we have quite a large group of friends, a good crowd of people we hang out with, share our time with, go for coffee with, have a good moan with. People we know well. Today we're going to be thinking about people we may not have even met, but they have an effect on our lives. Living, breathing saints, friends of Jesus of whom there are millions and millions. To be fair, we do know some of them. They are sitting around us here this morning. Some of them may not think they're very saintly, but there are in fact many, many more all over the country, all over the world. They're in our hospitals. They drive our buses. They teach in our schools, work in our shops, empty our bins, and play on our favorite team. Often they meet like this quite openly, where no one minds if we're going to church. But in some countries, they have to meet in secret, as the authorities don't like people going to church. So they meet in each other's homes, praying they won't be discovered. Sometimes in the past and now, people have been locked up or even killed for being Christian. Sometimes the church recognizes people like this as saints, other times, their names aren't even known. Something else about saints, they disturb the way things are. They disturb things by putting pressure on governments, regarding the inhumanity of slavery, by speaking out for prison reform against child labor. But often they disturb in other, less public ways by quietly letting their faith shine, by loving the unlovable, helping the homeless, making cups of tea, and serving others. They say Jesus is Lord by the way they speak, how they treat others, and how they seek to make their community a better place. They remind those in charge that their power is only temporary, that Jesus is the one who is really in charge. And that's what the saints of old did. That's what we have to do, even if it means that sometimes we're unpopular, that we're sidelined and viewed with suspicion. But if we believe it, we must live it and be saints where we are. Let's hear our reading from Revelation. The reading this morning is Revelation 7, verses 9 to 17, and it's from the Mission Bible. I looked again. I saw a huge crowd, too huge to count. Everyone was there, all nations and tribes, all races and languages. And they were standing, dressed in white robes and waving palm branches, standing before the throne and the Lamb and heartily singing. Salvation to our God on his throne. Salvation to the Lamb. All who were standing around the throne, angels, elders, animals, fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Oh yes, the blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, the honour and power and strength to our God for ever and ever. Oh yes. Just then one of the elders addressed me. Who are these dressed in white robes? 
And where did they come from? Taken aback, I said. Oh, sir, I have no idea, but you must know. Then he told me, these are those who come from the great tribulation, and they wash their robes, scrub them clean in the blood of the Lamb. That's why they're standing before God's throne. They serve him day and night in his temple, the one on the throne who will pitch his tent there for them. No more hunger, no more thirst, no more scorching heat. The lamb on the throne which shepherds them will lead them to the spring waters of life and God will wipe every last tear from their eyes. Thanks be to God for this reading. I wanted to pick a hymn that, that like reflect, reflected the words of that reading from Revelation. But I'm not sure if you know it. We'll have a, I know, I know, it's a shocking state of affairs. We'll have a crack at it. Um, so let's sing, shall we? Blessing and honour. In Roman times, simply saying Jesus is Lord was an edgy and often dangerous thing to do. It could lead you into a whole heap of trouble, not just for you, but your entire family too. Because it said Caesar wasn't Lord, Jesus was. That the Roman Empire wasn't the greatest power on the world in the world, God's kingdom was. And that Roman law wasn't the ultimate authority. God's law was, and still is. No wonder those early Christians risked persecution and martyrdom. They knew the truth of those three little words. Sadly, some things haven't changed since those times. Those who gather in secret in Iran, Saudi Arabia, North Korea, and in the underground churches in China risk the same 
for the simple proclamation that not the Ayatollah, not, now I'm going to have a go at this name, so be gentle with me, not King Salman bin Adulaziz, woo not respected comrade Kim Jong-un, not President Xi Jinping, but Jesus is Lord. An assertion that gives life and for some the risk of martyrdom. Being a saint is edgy stuff. But when we think about it, the saints and martyrs were and are not that much different from us. Like Mother Teresa serving the poor in Calcutta, risking sickness and disease, and the rumours and the bad press that follows someone who does God's work without desire for fame or fortune. Just a woman, listening to and obeying God and proclaiming Jesus is Lord. Or like Archbishop Oscar Romero, gunned down while saying mass because he spoke out against the murder, torture and oppression wrought by his government in El Salvador. He was just a man. He too sought to serve God and proclaim Jesus is Lord. Saints are the ones who get what Jesus is Lord means. However, they're not ones that are so holy that they, that they are heavenly minded and of no earthly use. Instead, saints are the ones who know that the simple claim that Jesus is Lord is one that has profound implications for how they live, love and structure society. Saints know that the journey of discipleship is one of service and faithfulness, not perfection, not insta-likes, but knowing Jesus is Lord, believing it and living it. And saints can come in all shapes and sizes. There are those who overturn social norms, fight for justice and against oppression. And there are others who I mentioned earlier who quietly let their faith shine by loving the unlovable, helping the homeless, making cups of tea and serving others. We have many saints in this church. Maybe you have some in yours. Saints who go about their faith, not with fanfare, but with quiet care. Saints who live out their faith in ways that will never make headlines but will make God's kingdom come that little bit more close. One of those people is Doris Davis. She's been dreading this bit. <laughs> Doris has acted as unofficial greeter for as long as I can remember. She welcomes, shows people where the loos are and makes an amazing cuppa. Essential, essential gifts. But by these simple but essential acts, she shows that Jesus is Lord. And in recognition of this role, we would like to commission her formally as greeter for Peasley Cross URC. So Doris, would you like to come out? No, not really, she said, but you will anyway, won't you? Yes. You, I'm going to make you work for this. Um, as an eldership, as a church family, we would like to formally recognise your role as greeter here at Peasley Cross and commission you as a way of saying thank you and as to be our official welcomer. And this is where you all clap. Now, Doris was supposed to get a nice badge at this point, but it didn't arrive on time. Thank you, Royal Mail. Um, but she will get a nice posh badge to wear. And you've all got to go, oh, Doris, I like your badge. <laughs> Let's practice. <laughs> oh, Doris, I like your badge. <laughs> she hates me. She hates everybody. Go and sit down, my darling. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> See, that wasn't embarrassing at all. 
right, while Doris's story sits there and quietly seethes, we're going to sing. So let's sing the wonderful Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. pray together shall we most high we thank you for the saints of old who understood and followed your will we thank you for their faithfulness and perseverance despite opposition stumbling paths and muddled motives give your grace now to those who seek to follow you in these times and we pray for where the church is persecuted and meeting in secret that you give grace, energy, assurance, and purpose to those who dare lead and follow in those places. We pray for where the church is met with suspicion due to our sins and failings, where our behaviors and words are used as a reason not to follow or believe in you. We pray that those who have been wounded by your people will find healing, 
perpetrators find justice, and your people find renewed humility. And we pray for where the church is met with indifference, that we may live out our calling to understand the meaning of the proclamation that Jesus is Lord. Risen Lord, you preach good news to the poor, freedom to the captives, and release to the oppressed. Yet we prefer the world as it is, to accumulate more rather than trust in God, to seek ways of war rather than paths of peace, and find ever more ingenious ways to imprison people. Help us to be faithful and, like your saints of old, persevere despite opposition, stumbling paths and muddled motives. And Holy Spirit, despite appearances, we believe you guide the church and that you guide us. Help us to listen more keenly when you speak to us. Help us to hear you when, we use un when you use unlikely voices, social movements, and people outside the church to inspire us to follow. Teach us holy wisdom to truly live out our calling to understand the meaning, meaning of the proclamation that Jesus is Lord. Eternal God, light in our darkness, comfort of the saints, guide of the perplexed, we bring our prayers from our prayer book. We ask for prayer for Hannah and Joseph, who are finally moving house this week. For Suzanne, for Mrs. Comerford, for Ian, for Stephen, for the family of Jeff Cleworth, Doreen and Alan Honey, and Robert Pennington. And now in the silence of our hearts, we bring all those we love, all those we know who are in pain, troubled, trapped, or distressed. And those we do not know, those who are far away, whose stories are in the news, but whose situations worry us, and who need to know Jesus is Lord. God, who knows us better than we know ourselves, hear us. Amen. And now let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now take our offering. saints who have stood where we are, proclaimed that you are Lord, have loved and served in this place and in places like it, up and down this country and on this planet. We thank you for all those saints, old and new, those who have been and those who are yet to come. And Lord, we pray that you will put your blessing on this money, that it will be used so that other people can know you as Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn. It's Rain in Me. Does anyone know it? No, rain in me, rain in your heart. Yeah? Do you know it? We know it's raining men. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> We're not playing it's raining men, Helen. Raining men. Helen 
said that, folks? For anybody who didn't catch that, Helen said that. Our church secretary, bless her heart. No, it's not, it's raining men. It's raining me. Okay, yes? Let's give it a go, shall we? Now, at the end of these services, I usually have some pithy quote or some anecdote or something to just send us out with. I don't have anything today because I forgot to write it, um, if I'm honest. Um, so all I will say is um, be nice to Doris. She's had a busy day. Uh, but never, never forget that the things you do for God no matter how small or you think, oh, it's just this. It's just changing the loo rolls. Um, it's, it's just tidying up a bit. They are all essential acts of service and they all are for God. So never, ever think that what you do isn't amazing because God loves all of it. Okay? Have we got that? Good. Let's say the grace to one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>